messages and uh, a lot of themes around the birth of Christ. So today I'm going to give you a different perspective and uh, I will touch upon the birth of Jesus Christ. But surrounding the birth of Jesus Christ, there were a few characters that had a very significant role. Most often we forget about these characters who had a role to play in and around the birth of Jesus Christ. So let me first tell you some of the characters that had an important role. First, as we all know, uh, the shepherds, the shepherds were around. The Bible says that the angel came, they told the good news, the shepherds went and preached, rather uh, they went and spread the good news. So they had a very important role of spreading the news that Christ was born. On the other side, I'm sure all of us have heard about Herod. Herod and his cruel plans, the way he killed thousands of children just because of the birth of Jesus Christ. This is on the other hand. On the other side, you have the three Maggies. You know, I still remember I grew up in a CSI background in, uh, in Chennai in South India, in Tamil Nadu. And during the Christmas season, all the Sunday school kids will be eagerly waiting because the theme around Christmas, there will always be a play. And for all the kids, it was a time that they would all await because everybody had excellent roles. Some would be uh, the kings, some would be uh, Joseph's, one will be Mary and everybody had different, different roles. When everybody was looking forward to it, I was always scared about this play and I would really be afraid thinking about this play. And my mother will always ask me, why do you get so tensed? Because always in the play, I had to play the role of the donkey on which Mary will sit. So my mother will ask me, why do you always get the role of this donkey? So I would tell her, you started feeding me so well that I only look like a donkey there. So they said, let him sit and ride on it. So I will crawl on my knees and the lady will sit on me. So it was a very dreadful experience for me, this Christmas play. So I've decided that at least my child should play the role of a king or Joseph or Mary or whatever it is. So th these are my fond memories of Christmas as I grew up. And today, I want to speak about the three Maggies, the life of the three Maggies. There are a lot of things for you and me to learn from the life of these three Maggies. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, I want to impart a few things which I'm sure you can take it along with you and it will come along a very, very long way if you're really giving attention to what I'm going to say. So let us close our eyes and start with a quick word of prayer. <clears throat> Lord, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time and Master. I pray that you will speak to your people. I pray that you will minister to your people, Master. And Lord, I am an ordinary and a weak vessel, Master. I cannot deliver the word with my intelligence or my flamboyance, Master. But it is possible only through your Holy Spirit. And I invite the Holy Spirit, Master. And I invite the Holy Spirit, and I invite the Holy Spirit to take control, to take control of our hearts. And I invite the Holy Spirit to minister to your people, Lord. Every single word I say should be from you, Master. Every single word I utter should be from you, Lord. If there are any deletions, I pray that you will delete it now. And if there's anything that I've missed, I pray that you add it now, Master. And let your people know that Jesus Christ lives even in 2013, Master. That Jesus Christ is looking at their lives very closely. Protect us and guard us. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Amen. Friends, uh, I will first go through the main portion about the three Maggies. And then I will touch upon the scripture portion that was given to you initially which was Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. If you have your Bibles, please turn to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Maggie from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born? King of the Jews. We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod 
heard this, he was very disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem and Judea, they replied, For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you may find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Friends, when we go through these scripture portions very closely, there are a few things that you and me can learn from these Herods, good and bad. So first I want to talk of the good things or, the, or rather the qualities that you and me should possess like these three Maggies. And there, were, there was a very, very big blunder that these three Maggies committed which you and me can always commit in our day-to-day -day life. So these are the two perspectives that I'm going to give from the life of these Maggies. The first point that I want to lay for your consideration is that here are three Maggies. These three Maggies come from different regions. They don't come together or they don't form a union or a group and they don't talk to each other and they come. All these three come from different directions looking at one star. And in those days there was no GPS, turn right, turn left. You could not pull the window down, ask somebody, can I go left? Can I take a U-turn? Can I take right? Absolutely nothing. All that they did was follow a star. And the Bible also says, and theologians also say, that these three Maggies were people with power, they were people with authority, they were people with wealth, they were well-placed people, they were just not ordinary people. And these three people knew that the child was born. Who was this child? This child was the child of the Most High God. This child was going to be the Messiah. How come only these three Maggies knew about it? Have you ever thought of this? There are thousands and millions of people. There are thousands and millions who are wealthy, who have power, who have authority, who have wealth. But there were only three of them who knew that Jesus Christ was going to be born. Have you ever thought of this? So why is that only three of them knew about the birth of Jesus Christ? It was only the three of them who had a longing to see Jesus Christ. Today many of us, God has blessed us tremendously. God has blessed us with a good work. God has blessed us with a good family. God has blessed us with good children. God has blessed us with several things. But how many of us seated here have a heart longing like these three Maggies to go and see Jesus Christ? How many of us know that there is somebody who is born just to sacrifice himself? Today the entire Christmas is surrounded about fun and frolic and get-togethers and food and opening of wine bottles for some opening of liquor bottles for some hugging for some all these get-togethers unfortunately the true essence of Christmas is slowly being lost and in this so-called America the country that whose foundation was built on this gospel you have to be very careful to even utter the word Merry Christmas I still remember the first time when I was coming here, there was an orientation given to me. And in that orientation, they had very clearly told me, never say Merry Christmas. If you meet somebody, tell them Happy Holidays. How miserable it is. The very thought of Jesus Christ being born has been lost. So what do we say? Happy Holidays. The birth of Jesus Christ 
has become a season for holiday. That is how people have turned it. And that is how the devil has deceived his people. Today many of us don't realize that we have to go in search of the king. We sit at our home. If there is a small problem, we get dejected. If there is a small issue at work, we get depressed. If there is a small sickness, we get really annoyed. And we ask, oh, where is God? Is God still alive? Is he still there? Is he watching over my family? Is he watching over this? Is he watching over that? We have hundreds of questions. And we expect Jesus Christ to come down and to change or rather blow away that mountain in front of us. Yes, he has come here for that. Yes, he came to this world to redeem his people. But how many of us also realize why Jesus Christ came? Jesus Christ was sent by the Father to redeem you and me, my dear brother, sister. Jesus Christ came into the world to go to this cross. Several times or rather many times we forget about the cross. That is why every time when I preach somewhere or the other, I talk about the cross. Because the true essence of Christianity revolves around the cross. It was only because Jesus Christ went to the cross and they shed his precious blood that you and me are seated here like this. So we must never forget the cross, my dear brother, sister. And you and me can enter into eternity only when we come to the cross. Only when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Otherwise, you and me will be going to eternity. It's a big question mark, my dear brother, sister. So the first point that I want to lay before you from the lives of these three Maggies is that these powerful people, wealthy people, people with authority, they knew that they had to go in search of the king. So you and me should know that we must go in search of the king. The second point that I want to lay for your consideration, here are three people who come from different directions. These days travel has become so easy. We can fly. We can take the train, we can use the bus, we can drive by our own car. Life has become so easy. But just think from the shoes of these three Maggies. They come from different, different directions. They would have had to cross water. They would have had to cross land. They would have had to face storms. They would have had to face winds. They would have had to face thunders. Several barriers were there before them. But they crossed all these barriers and came to the feet of Jesus Christ. There is a secret for you and me in this, my dear brother, sister. You and me must know that when we come to see the king, when we go to worship the king, for sure we have to cross several barriers in our life. That barrier could be in our family. That barrier can be in our workplace. That barrier could be in our ministry. That barrier could be in our church. That barrier could be anywhere. But we must know that we must cross these barriers. Many of us give up because of problems, because of what people say, because of how people deal with us, because of injustice, because of people hurting us, several obstacles that come our way. But you and me will have to face those obstacles, my dear brother, sister. Life cannot be a bed of roses. You will have to go through storms. You will have to go through tsunamis. You will have to go through earthquakes. You have to go through different, different situations in your life. But when you stand firm on your faith, when you stand firm on the reason that where you are running and to whom you are running, that will lay the foundation for your life. And that will sh clearly show you the path towards the king. The Bible says that the path is very narrow. But if you have to come to the king, the path is very narrow. And it is a very difficult life, my dear brother, sister. You just cannot lead a very lethargic life and expect Jesus Christ to come and dwell in you. Today, how many of us seated here can boldly say, Yes, Christ dwells in me, my brother. Yes, Christ dwells in me, my sister. Yes, Christ dwells in me. Christ is the foundation of my life. Christ is the one who leads me. Today, all of us want to do different things for God. All of us want to help in some way or the other. All this is good. But the true foundation is for you and me to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And until and unless He dwells in you, you can never see those miracles that you expect, my dear brother, sister. God is more than willing to move that mountain in front of you. 
He is more than willing to heal that person in your family. He is more than willing to break that iron door in your life. But have, do you have the time to come to the faith of Jesus Christ? Do you have the strength, tenacious faith to cross every barrier, to cross every sea, to cross every mountain, to cross every barrier and then come to the feet of Jesus Christ? Many people, they ask me, brother, how do you pray? You work, you're saying you work for 10 hours. You're saying you have a very hectic schedule. You're saying you, several people call you for prayer. How do you find the time? Yes, many people call for prayer. Yes, I have a 10 to 12 hour work day. Yes, I work for six days a week. But after this, I must find time to come to the king. I must find time to bend my knees. I must find time to speak to the king of kings. I must find time to fast and pray. It is very, very critical, my dear brother, sister. Many of us, with, because of the zeal to do something for God, we keep feeding people. We keep counseling. We keep giving biblical uh, uh, scripture portions as quotes to keep helping them. We want to sing. We want to do different things. Yes, all that is good. But after a certain period of time, your bank will dry up. Your bank will not have any currency to lend anybody. Because you yourself will need a refilling. You yourself need to fill yourself with the word. And that word can be given to you only through the scripture and only through the Holy Spirit. And that is the reason why you and me must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And you and me should know that we must cross these barriers to come and see the king. So these are the first two points that I want to lay before you. The third point all this while, these three Maggies are going in a path in a very supernatural way. They are just following a star and following that star, they have a belief, they have faith that they will go and see the king. And suddenly, they begin to use their human intelligence. The human intelligence tells them, since this child is going to be the Messiah, since this child is going to be a king, this child surely will be born in a palace. And that wrong decision leads to disaster. Till the time they were following the star, till the time there was a supernatural hand that was leading them, they were going in the right direction. But the moment they use the human intelligence, disaster takes place. And what is the disaster? They go straight to Herod and they tell Herod, hey, we heard that the king, the child is going to be born. It should have been born in this palace. Herod immediately becomes alert. And he knows he is beginning to sense something is wrong. And he finds out that a king is going to be, or a king is born. And he sends out an order that thousands of kids, thousands of infants should be killed. One wrong decision made by these three Maggies leads to the death of thousands of infants. Many times, you and me do the same blunder, my dear brother, sister. We use our human intelligence, we use our experience, we go by the words what our friends say, our family members say, or our colleagues say, and we do certain things. And when we use our intelligence, the moment we move away from God, and we decide what is right for ourselves, it leads to self-destruction. And it not only leads to self-destruction, it also led to the destruction of several people around them. Many times our actions have a rippling effect on several people around us. I still remember a mother who called me for prayer. Very carefully they brought their son up. They brought this son in a very holy environment. They injected all good things into him. But somehow, slowly or steadily, because of bad companionship, he started involving himself in drugs, in, with alcohol and several other things. And because of this one young man's life, the mother was shattered. Looking at the mother being shattered and she fell sick, the father fell sick. Looking at the mother and father falling sick, the sister went astray. One man's wrong decision led to rippling effects. That is what happens when we move away from the plan of God. That is what happens when we use our human intelligence or we use our experience or the knowledge that we gain over a few years. When we use this, this is what will happen, my dear brother, sister. This so-called three Maggies were intelligent, powerful and people with authority. 
but one wrong decision led to the disaster of several young kids just imagine the families of those young infants just imagine what the family would have gone through these three people going and committing a blunder they lost a child they lost the most precious thing in their life so that one wrong decision is a big learning for you and me my dear brother sister when you come to jesus christ you must learn to obey him you must learn to follow him and you must follow his instructions to the word t and that is the reason why the bible says that you have to be like a child to enter into the kingdom of heaven none of you who are seated here who are parents you will have your child come and ask you mommy will you feed me tomorrow daddy will you clothe me tomorrow mommy will you pay for my expenses they will never come and ask you because they know for sure that tomorrow morning my mother will feed me with milk tomorrow my ma morning my mother will give me a good breakfast my mother will send a good lunch she will take care of my needs my father will take care of me every single child knows it by default that their parents will take care that is the same kind of mentality you and me should have when we come to jesus christ my dear brother sister blind faith these three magis had blind faith as long as they were following the star they had no clue where the star is going to lead them where it will take them but they followed it and as long as they followed it it was a supernatural path and it was taking them in the right direction but the moment their intelligence came in there was a deviation so if there is a deviation in your life today if there is a delay in your life today and there are certain changes in your life today you must know the answer to that my dear brother sister are you sitting in the will of jesus christ are you sitting in the will of the most high god are you doing things which is pleasing to him has your direction come from jesus christ or has your direction come from your flesh these are questions that you must answer for yourself my dear brother sister the next point that i want to lay before you here are three magis they come from different direction they come crossing several barriers they commit one blunder after committing that one blunder they come and see this king and they bow down and they worship him and they give gifts there are two very important points in this few sentences that i mentioned for you and me my dear brother sister the bible says that as so as soon as they saw this baby they bowed down and worshiped him as i mentioned these kings were people with authority with wealth with power with everything but they knew that when they came to the presence of the most high god they had to humble themselves and they had to bow down and worship this baby for you and me there is a very clear message my dear brother sister whoever you are whatever is your position how much ever money you have how many houses you have many cars all that is fine but when you come to the presence of the most high god you must humble yourself you must go down and worship the most high god that is what the bible says it is not me who is saying this but the bible says that they bow down and worship him these three magis the bible does not say they went for theology classes the bible does not say they went for conventions the bible does not say that they heard a minister preach over the tv nothing but they knew the basics the basic foundation is they knew that if they came to see the king they had to humble themselves bow down and worship him and the next thing is very interesting the bible says that they gave frankincense they gave myrrh and they gave treasures to this child when will we give my dear brother sister many of us give when god blesses us with a good job with a good salary then we decide yes 10% i will give because god has given me in abundance Yes I will do this because God has blessed me in abundance. When there is abundance that is when you and me have a tendency to give. When we have abundant abundance in talent we decide okay I have to sing for God. When God gives me talents in some way or the other in abundance we decide we have to do something for God. Similarly these three magis God had blessed them in abundance with something or the other and they knew that when they came to the king from this abundance they had to give that is another important quality for you and me my dear brother sister these three magis knew that they had to give to the king 
they had to give whatever was given to them whatever god had blessed them with they had to give it to give it back to the king that is another quality that you and me must have or must learn from these three magis we must give our talent we must give whatever god has blessed us with we must give a portion back to jesus christ please do not think i'm trying to sell a, 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 a notion under the table that i'm trying to ask for donation i'm trying to ask for money absolutely no i will never talk about giving but this is a very important point for you and me my dear brother sister if you want god to bless you in abundant you must learn to give back in abundance because as long as you are stinger your fingers are very stingy you will never be able to receive in abundance i will never forget a preacher what he told me once he told give 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 and give until you feel the pinch until you feel the pinch keep giving that is the sign where you are giving in abundance when you begin to feel the pinch today many people they give out of the abundance the 10% they are very clear this 10% of my time saturday sunday alone brother i will come i will help you certain things then i have other commitments the my dear brother sister time is running out you and me have a role to play in this entire kingdom if i also have to say brother money is very critical for me time is very critical for me why should i fly from mexico why should it is almost traveling from india to uh, america it is almost 10 to 12 hours there is a lot of cost involved there is a lot of uh, uh, miscellaneous things involved but why should i come every month here it is only with that one notion that this gospel has to be preached that the calling that the lord has laid on me i must be sincere and honest in this because until and unless you are sincere and honest in these small things you can never never receive big things from god my dear brother sister so these few things are very very critical for you and me from the lives of these three magis i can share several other things but i want to keep it short brief and crisp so that you can take these points along with you the life of these three magis are lessons for you and me these are lessons for life these are lessons that are very critical for your success and my success if we can imbibe this there are several good things that are in store for us let us close with a quick word of prayer <clears throat> lord our heavenly father we thank you lord again for giving us this opportunity to gather under one roof master and lord i pray that you will speak to your people regularly master i pray that you will pour out your spirit of prayer on them that they may have a fellowship with you every day lord and like these three magis lord i pray that you will pour out a thirst into us master that we may long to see you that we may long to worship you that we may long to speak to you master every day every day lord and this christmas season let us not look at you as a small child in a crib but also let us look at the king of kings and the lord of lords in his majesty in all his glory and lord i pray that you will touch your people's life master that you will touch your people's life whatever other hearts desires let it be fulfilled lord let it be fulfilled and as they step into the new year lord i pray that you will enlarge their territories you will bless the work of their hands and whatever your plans are let it be fulfilled in their life let it be fulfilled in their life protect them and guard them master lord the bible says that you put a hedge around job you put a hedge around his children his family his possessions his properties around everything that he had and that was the reason why this devil did not have access similarly lord i pray that you will put that same hedge around your people i pray that you will put a hedge around their families around their possession their properties their household their vehicles master let not the devil have access to any of their things master give each and every one of us the required travel mercies give me the grace to hear good reports and testimonies from their life in jesus matchless name i pray amen